think I'm finally getting the hang of lockdown and it's taken a while. We're six or seven weeks in compared to the first week and that kind of deluge, that tsunami of and you won't be doing this and you won't be doing that and the fading away of all structure of my life and just left adrift and not knowing how to cope and not having any structure, not having any anchors, not having any grounding to not just a week, but to every single day. And then there's the sudden input to, or everybody seeming wanting to fill that digital space and the digital space has become overloaded and everybody is wanting to rush there like it's a new Klondike and I have no compulsion to do that. I want to stop, enjoy the slowdown. I want to think about things. Ironically, I'm also having more meetings than ever, even though I've got no work. And that can become doubly overwhelming because there's a tendency to begin to rely on the digital for the social. And yes, I like those kind of the group meetings or the one-to-ones and the new conversations which I'm having but it seems to me like double the effort and less than half of the reward and it's really really exhausting. I've gone back to some of the old ways like going back to the phone and writing letters and my studio which is 20 miles away I can't get there because of the lockdown restrictions so Where I am has had to become a new studio, but I'm not yet really in the space to make work. I'm still thinking, I'm still processing. And so part of my creativity is learning how to cope with lockdown. Initially, I found lockdown really frustrating because I had a lot of things lined up, a lot of exciting events planned that I cancelled. Um, and I think that brought up a lot of feelings for me because uh, there's been a lot of times in the past where I felt like I was just starting to gain momentum and then I've had a flare-up with my MS and everything's had to be cancelled. Um, so that brought up old feelings of feeling frustrated by that. But the thing that I took comfort in initially was the fact that this time around, I'm not the only person stuck at home. Everyone in the world is stuck at home. And actually, maybe I have a bit of an advantage uh, in this situation because I know how to work on certainty. Uh, And I think that those of us with chronic illnesses and disabilities, we have experience of working in difficult circumstances when all our plans have changed. So I've been thinking about uh, trying to make use this time to generate some new ideas um, and maybe make some new work that uh, is possible in the new circumstances that I find myself in and hoping that sometimes restrictions can be what we need to uh, generate new ideas. I've spent the last three and a half years uh developing a project fundraising for a project and that project was going to be um the biggest kind of review of my of of my work around my my own personal experience of dyslexia and the experience of others that i've come to contact with and it and i've been producing all this sculpture this performance uh, uh, uh this uh photography for this exhibition and then all of a sudden um I suddenly, you know, like all of us, suddenly realised that it was very unlikely that it was going to happen when I thought it was going to happen. And then suddenly we're on lockdown. Suddenly I, I can't get things printed or framed or or even develop uh, plan B. I'm into plan C. Um, and the plan C uh, has had to become a kind of a new way of working, going back to, ironically, the new way of working is 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 me in the uh, me in the attic with materials and and making things um the thing that i'm kind of unsure about is 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 how to how i'm going to be presenting the things i'm making um i'm still making things for the show but i don't know when that's going to happen um i'm also homeschooling three days a week so suddenly i haven't got five days um i've got two days and so um everything's being crammed into this small space 
And as happens when when uh, priorities shift, things that weren't important becomes very important and things that, that that were didn't mean anything like popping to the shops have now become a really big thing. Um, and so for me, I think the real impact of all of this is is. Uh, is I had an idea in my head and now now that's ended for the time being. Been very worried for friends and family, um, especially like friends, disabled friends, um, that um, they weren't able to get um, PPE for their um, PAs or themselves. Um, it's been lonely as well. Um, I was relieved not to go to school and do music at school because uh, I, I knew it was wrong um, going into school from from a bus, crowded bus. So I'm glad not to have any part in bringing it through public transport to children. I'm really relieved and that it should have happened a long time before. Um, but uh, apart from all that, um, for my cello, it's been really, really brilliant. I've finally got the time to actually work um, properly on repertoire and properly on, on my technique instead of like running around everywhere like usual, which because uh, I've got, because um, with my BPD, it's hard to get a lot done. Um, it just all impacts on my cello when I'm rushing around and trying to do stuff. Um, so it's good to have that proper cello time. I'm going to do a cello and mark making workshop for Disability Arts Online, which is really um, exciting. I'm going to uh, be on Together TV with Together 2012. I'm going to uh, lay down some initial rough uh, tracks towards my EP and I'm going to start Defiant Journey um, on, on a, a YouTube version. So it's all really exciting. So isolation. Well, I think I have this in common with a lot of other disabled artists that we're kind of very used to living in in a state of lockdown um i can easily go for a week without stepping outside my front door and so um this current situation ha hasn't kind of changed the rhythm of our lives necessarily very much um it has kind of brought into focus in the in the work this um, kind of sense of thinking about um, the kind of fragility of of life and the um, this sense that I have of nature fighting back against the 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 kind of parasitical nature of the human species of you know what we've done to dominate the planet um but this painting is very much kind of its starting point was kingly vale which is a grove of 2000 year old yew trees that have something very important to to teach us i feel you know you go there and the atmosphere and the atmosphere i'm trying to convey in the painting is this sense of these incredible beings that have absorbed 2000 years worth of, of uh, life and vitality and watched the human species evolve and, and have watched nature for all of that time. And you go there and you get that sense. And it's about connecting with other disabled artists who whose work also kind of resonates with that. So this lockdown has brought about stuff like isolation and, you know, 
uh, social dis- distancing, but it's also made me laugh a lot too, which is probably a dodgy thing to say in these times. But I've seen people on the street who are trying to socially distance whilst drunk, and that is hilarious. I've seen um, in my local supermarket uh, this man wearing a gimp mask because it's really hard to get good quality uh, face mask off the internet. At the moment, I'm making videos called Useless Hints and Tips for Lockdown, and it's a humorous take on my personal experience of lockdown, of um, trying not to let the pain of it and the worry of it take over my life. So I find um, using humor, I you know, we take and regain some of that that power back. So that's why I created them. So I've made videos on, you know, shaving your eyebrows so uh, you don't want to go out or making a bra out of face masks and, um, you know, making a self-distancing pole out out of old sex toys. You know, it's doing stuff like that is funny. It, it, It takes out the the um the pain and and the darkness of the situation and you're 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 laughing at being human and that's what people mustn't forget that you know being human is 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 painful at times but we also have that gift of laughing at ourselves too so i i would love to see how people um can uh look at their situation humorously 